Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Money Maker, and this is designed by Paul Brinkkepper. All right, you guys, this game takes place in Amsterdam, kind of talking about like the beginning of uh, banking as an industry. And, um, you know, all the things you want to do. You want to make sure that you are investing, you're diversifying your investments, that way you're not hurt as much if there's like a, something like a bank run uh, on certain industries or whatever the case is. Um, you want to spend your money that you have in the bank, but you don't want to overdo it either, so that way you kind of get bit on the back end of it too. So there's a little bit of a cautionary banking tale built into here, I think. Uh, but yeah, let me give you a quick overview of how the game works. All right, so here's our board for Moneymaker. Basically, we have a large series of islands. They all kind of are levels within the city. So we have this level one city, which is just one large island that has all six of our different investments on it. We have level two that has two islands. One that has three investments. One has three investments. Okay, it kind of gets more and more diversified until you get to that level six level, which has six different islands that all have one investment each. What that represents is how diverse your portfolio is. The higher up you go as a banker, the higher level you get to. Basically, each island is going to have its own kind of isolated investments that you're going to be able to uh, protect when other things go bad. Every player is going to get a little kind of vault, this bank vault, the divider, that makes it so that no one else can see how much money you have. You're also going to start the game with some money as well. This is the actual real currency. This is the real money in the game. But well, a lot of times what we're going to be giving out is not the actual money. It's going to be the credits for that money, saying, my credits are as good as currency, but they're not necessarily backed by currency at this point. And here we have an event pile, which we'll get to in a little bit. And then over here, we also have all of our different investments that we're going to be able to invest in. It's going to tell you what the cost is, at least sort of. It's a variable cost. And it tells you what kind of industries you're in. And that's going to be relating to the different uh, you know, diversification of your different industries. And then at the bottom, you're going to get a chance to produce some goods as well. Every player is going to get one of these kind of player aids that kind of gives you through the round overview as well as what happens during a bank overrun, which is kind of the main uh, uh, thing that you're trying to avoid in this game is having your banks overrun and you can't pay back your credits that you've been giving out. All right, and then last set we have our four action cards. Every turn you're going to select one of these action cards to activate and uh, going to do whatever it says. And we're going to do those in order. Everyone's going to do whatever their own action card says. But we're going to do them in that same order. So let's go over the first one. This is the auction and return cards. It says choose an investment card to be auctioned off. So this is going to be one of these five cards. What's going to happen is you get a chance to... Uh, bid on that auction. Everyone does. However, if you are the person who was the person who initiated the auction and you still lose, you still have a chance to outbid the winner after all the information has been revealed, overpay them by $5, and then you get a chance to win that card. Also, once you've used one of your action cards, you don't get it back until you go through an auction phase. This is kind of your refreshing of your hand in order to refresh all your different action options. All right, the next action I want to talk about, this is the buy and produce. Okay, so this basically says we have all these different cubes over here on the red and the green. Those are going to represent the goods and services. You get a chance to buy up to four of them at their current market price divided by two, a half value. So uh, over here, we start off with the ones, and we kind of keep on going down. The twos, or all the ones are gone, then we go to twos. If the twos are gone, that's the threes. That's going to be what their price is. And you get half of that value when you're purchasing them. So if we wanted four of those red goods, uh, it would be one, 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 and half of that. So it would be two dollars or two coins to get those goods. Also, during the auction phase, if you had earned any of those investments, you also get a chance to produce any goods uh, from the supply based off what's on the bottom of the card. Either good over here or maybe some services, whatever the case is. Before going too much further, let me kind of show you what one of these looks like up close. Basically, this is saying, uh, this is going to be what kind of goods are working on. This is kind of a, a building uh, investment. This is going to what is going to be produced is when you do one of those phase two buy and produce things. This is going to be the minimum bid cost. It's three multiplied by the current market value of the goods. So right now we have one. So it would be uh, three of those, would be one, one, and one. The minimum you could bid for this is three. So as the game goes on and more and more of those goods are gone, uh, the card like this, when it comes up, it's going to be very expensive because maybe we're at the fours or the fives potentially multiplied by three. Now the minimum bid for this investment is going to be a lot more expensive. All right, the third action card, this is selling products. So this is a chance to sell all those cubes that you've produced or earned during the phase two. You now get a chance to sell them, but this time you sell them at the current market rate. Uh, so if you bought them for half price and sell them at full price, you've made an income. So this is a great way to get rid of some of your cubes and kind of earn some income. When you're going out and you're buying things, you're not using your gold coins. You're using those credit tokens. So let's say we had spent uh, 20 of our credits 
we'd put him there on that island, showing that we have 20 credits that we owe out there, because we're currently a level one banker, so they're all gonna go on that level one island. So now this is how much kind of money that we have given out that we need to be able to cover, potentially. Same thing when you're buying goods, you're buying them with credits. So again, let's say we bought some more goods, we spent five bucks there, let's put that on the island as well. But now during the phase four action, what you can do is you can actually spend your gold to buy back your credits. And by doing so, you might have a chance to raise your credit score as well. So let's say we were able to uh, pay off, you know, spend 20 of our gold to actually bring back 20 of our credits. What's gonna happen is now we get a chance to move up on our credit score. There's kind of thresholds that you have to beat. In order to get to the second level, you have to spend at least 10 credits, or buy back at least 10 credits. In order to go to the next level, you have to buy back at least 20 credits, and so on and so forth, until you get to the top level. And that's when you have the most amount of credit scores, and your highest confidence in your bank happens. And then what you can do is you can take your credits, and you can move up to the next series of islands, the next level, and divide them up if you want to. So those are the four main actions. You get a chance to buy some investments, you get a chance to buy some cubes and produce on your investments, you get a chance to sell some of the goods and services that you've acquired, and then you get a chance to buy back some of your credit using the money that you've earned by selling back your goods. But I've been talking about diversifying and kind of, kind of going up on these levels, trying to get your money and credits in different places. Uh, why would that be? Well, let's do something here. Let's go over to our event cards. After all of our characters have gone through one, two, and three, and four phases, we're gonna flip over this event card and see what it says. This one says, uh, a number of entrepreneurs are in a hurry to get their money out of the bank fast. Basically, it's a good old-fashioned bank run. Look at this sector on the die. On islands with the head of that sector, all credit pieces are requested for cash payouts. Okay, so we've got a die over here. We're going to roll it. We've got that windmill symbol. Over here we have the buildings, we have the fisheries, we have the boats. Over here we have the windmills, wheels, and the tulips. So unfortunately, we have our credit on an island that was just rolled. So now we are forced to pay that back. If we have the money, no problem. We simply spend that money and buy back our credit. And now we have less credit out there. If we can't pay back our debts, we've got some more problems over here. Let's see what this says. Uh, repairs may be promoted, meaning if you paid back enough and you you know, went over a threshold, you'll be able to go up on that credit score uh, chart there. It says defaulters place 10 credits as a penalty interest on the board. Per defaulter, the confidence meter moves one step to the right. So basically, if we didn't, weren't able to pay back our goods, we would have to move or add 10 more credits to the board at our current level, basically giving away 10 free dollars that we don't have any backing on. It also mentioned that per person that defaults and cannot pay back their credits, the uh, confidence meter in the banking system goes, uh, uh, goes down. And that kind of acts like a game timer. Once that token gets all the way down to that center area over there, what's going to happen is an actual bank run is going to happen. Where the same thing is going to happen, we're going to roll a die, we're going to have to pay back some debts, and then we're going to reset that confidence meter. That's also kind of how the game progresses. The game is going to end after three bank runs, after that track has gone down three times. At that point, the game ends immediately and the scores are counted up. Whoever has the highest final score we wins uh, and they get to, you know, perpetuate the family fortune into the next generation. All right, so all of your different score, how your score is tabulated is by a variety of different things. First of all, the gold coins that you have in your vault, you get that value. Also, all your investment cards. Uh, so whatever these investment cards that you've earned, you get to get those, whatever the current value is for those goods rounded up, that's going to be how much you get. Also, the goods that you have, the actual cubes that you've earned, you're going to get points for those at half of the market value. If you earned someone else's credit, so it's your, say that you're the play, purple player, but over the course of the game, you were given uh, an orange player's credit, you're going to get that money as well. It's as if you had currency from them. You might end up with someone else's credits as a result of an event card or perhaps some deal that you guys worked out. But either way, those credits that you earn from them can be spent during the game as if they were money, as if they were gold. But also at the end of the game, they're also going to count as if they were gold. All right, so then also you're going to get points based off of wherever your credit rating is. So you're going to add up all those categories. But then you're going to subtract all the credit you have still on the board, any credits any other players might have. You're going to you know, subtract all those things off from your total score, and that's going to be your final score. Whoever has the most points wins the game. So all the characters that you can be playing as or the different colors are all real people. And there's even a sheet inside the game that kind of explains how they were all involved in this world and this banking world. So it's kind of cool that you can reference that and you can see who you're playing and what they did. So it's a little, little educational thing right there.
I like how the the higher your banking score got. There's actually you know nowadays there's actually like a credit score kind of a thing. You're if you're a, a plus a plus you know creditor or whatever. Yeah. But in this game, you're kind of building up on this track, uh, being a more and more reputable creditor. The more able you're able to do that, you're able to kind of diversify all your investments and where your money is tied up in. So that way, when a bank run does happen, when those event cards come up, you are less likely to get you know, get stung on that, have to pay back all your money all at one time. So I, the more higher you can get, more reputable you can be as a creditor, the more able you're able to handle those bad events coming your way. I also like in this game that when you do the auction, um, sometimes it sucks when you play a game and you want to do an action and then somebody makes it so you can't, but when you play the auction action, everybody has a chance to um, auction on that, but if you're the one that chose that, you can choose still to get it if you outbid the highest one by five. So you still have a chance to get what you want if you're willing to spend that money. So I like that you still have an opportunity. This kind of has that like, um, uh, Puerto Rico or Race for the Galaxy style action selection thing where um, you are able to pick have four actions in your hand and you're going to choose one of them to, to use. Um, and uh, everybody can choose the same one or different ones or whatever the case is. But they're in the way that they're numbered, the way they're ordered, really kind of helped explain the game too. It made it really easy for me to teach. So the number one card was all about being able to buy investments, spending your money, spending your credits to, to in order to get investments. Uh, then the next one was the ability to use your investments to build uh, goods or services, yeah. so that you, you can kind of gain some of that stuff. Now the third phase was being the ability to sell those goods and services in order to make money. And then the fourth one was to pay back the credits that you done in. in Number one with the money that you earned in number three. <laughs> so the way it kind of laid itself out, it taught itself very nicely. It was all very clear. Uh, that, you know, you can kind of just go with one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, if you wanted to, uh, every turn, and just yeah. kind of go through that th those those motions, or you kind of mix it up based off of what you'd earned in previous rounds or whatever the case is. But it was very clear. Yeah. Overall, um, while we were playing this game, I was quite bored. Um, I thought the game was really dry. We were playing with our six-year-old, and she understood it, but we were kind of telling her what to do, and she was able to follow through the motions. Um, but it was just kind of like you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. And I don't know. I just felt really dry to me. Like, I wanted there to be more oomph in it. I wanted there... I wanted it to engage my attention for longer, and it wasn't a bad game. I just wasn't engaged. For me, I mean, it, it was, there was a build-up to the game, but it was very linear and very predictable. Yeah. As you're kind of going up and everything, everything's kind of getting more expensive. You're, so you're spending more, so you're using, spending more, so you're using more, so you're spending more. And you just kind of, everything just kind of ramps up slowly in a very linear, predictable way. Um, which is all, you know, it's kind of how the world works. It's kind of how inflation works. It's kind of how all that stuff works. So to me, I didn't, I, this is not a game that I would bring around to a game night, play with yeah. my buddies. You know, this is not, it's not, there's no excitement here, for me at least. Uh, however, there is a lot of interesting, I guess, educational moments. You know, I think that there is, if you want to teach a, an, uh, a class on how the banking system works, this is a fantastic simulation of how that works. It's exactly how this, you know, how things go. You, the investments, the way you, you know, the credit is out there and you spend credit as if it was currency, but it's not really currency. It needs to be backed by something, all that stuff. So I think this is a very interesting um, educational tool, essentially. Um, there is also, in a way, I think a little bit of a... Uh, pessimistic? A pessimistic viewpoint of the banking system uh, kind of interwoven within this. There's a, a cautionary tale, you know, you know, wanting, I guess, making, trying try to get you to think more about where your money is, where, uh, what your bank is doing with your money, whatever the case is, being able to have, make sure your money is being backed by something real as opposed to just whatever, nebulousness. Uh, so I do not share that same pessimism. Um, I, 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 I share it. A skepticism, I guess, yeah, but not a yeah. pessimism. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, a healthy wariness. So definitely, I think that's that's something that was a design goal of this designer was to, to make you be thinking about that kind of stuff. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.
You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.